definitely Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, for instance, have been the most eloquent, the most forthright, the most courageous in speaking up for the need for return for democracy in, in uh, Myanmar, for the release of Dao Aung San Suu Kyi, etc. I have no doubt about that. And, and, all, all, uh, and all appreciation to, um, to, to the leaders involved, the foreign minister, Ibu Retno, has been extremely active uh, in, this, in this field. My only footnote is this. In the past, whenever we, we try to project or promote certain ideas within ASEAN, whether it be reform and democracy, good governance, whether it be a foreign policy orientation of ASEAN that is a bit more independent, we do so in a way that at the same time maintain ASEAN unity. So it has to be a very well calibrated, uh, less is more type, sometimes pushing, uh, uh, pressing on the, on the throttle, sometimes pressing on the brake to make sure that everyone is on board. Uh, and we present positions, opinions, and be our, our expectations in a manner that doesn't cause collapse in the entire ASEAN home. Now, what I'm seeing now at the moment is that while individual ASEAN member states, whether it be Indonesia, Myanmar, uh, Malaysia, or Singapore, are able to eloquently uh, express their view on Myanmar uh, in terms of reform and democracy, the entire ASEAN home is actually uh, perfectly divided. And, and this is where I think uh, the challenge, the true challenge for Indonesia is, is easy, basically, to speak up you know, what, what you feel nationally. But how do you do so in a way that at the same time you bring everyone along with you? And this is, I think, the true test of Indonesia's chairmanship next year, because when we become chair of ASEAN, it is not only the national head that we wear, uh, we have on our, on our uh, but also our uh, chairmanship head as well. So I hope, uh, I'm, I'm confident as a matter of fact, that our uh, policymakers in Indonesia will have the uh, wherewithal, will have the... Uh, the initiative, the, the thought leadership and ideas to achieve the two objectives all at the same time, not just to speak full, with full of uh, passion and, 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 and determination on Myanmar itself, but seeing the ASEAN home collapse, uh, but to do both at the same time. We can whistle and walk at the same time. You know, I mean, Indonesia, by way of uh, reflections and recalling, was the, the country that actually in the early to 2000s uh, brought the issue of the South China Sea uh, to be discussed among regional states that led to the Manila Declaration and then the DOC itself. Uh, I remember at the time our mindset was uh, preventive uh, in trying to uh, manage the potential for conflict in the, in the South China Sea and the response by some of the ASEAN member states was ex was uh, deafening silence actually they, they weren't that keen <laughs> why, why should we discuss these issues but in any case uh, thanks to Indonesia's uh, thought leadership and initiative uh, there has been uh, an ASEAN China modality to manage uh, the issue the DOC 2002 and then uh, and the subsequent efforts to have the COC uh, realized. So I think it is important for ASEAN and China to uh, press on and utilize uh, that modality, the ASEAN-China uh, uh, process. But here I think the key thing to me, seems to me is the discrepancy between uh, words and action. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, China speaks very eloquently and very kindly in many cases uh, on, on in terms of their commitment to peaceful resolution, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the action on the ground or at sea speaks otherwise. And, and there is an dis increasing discrepancy or gap between the diplomatic process and the situation at sea in terms of uh, attempts to change the, the realities uh, on the ground or at sea by, by China. And I think uh, ASEAN member states must be persistent in highlighting that gap uh, because there is uh, a, a real and discernible gap between actions and, and words.